Opening the floodgates of bad claims and bankruptcy, the Supreme Court's War on the Poor, Midland Funding versus Johnson. Brought to you by YourLegalLegup.com, your advantage if you're being sued by debt collectors. Bankruptcy has been one refuge debtors have from debt collectors. And many people have thought that if they could just get into bankruptcy, they could then relax and forget about litigation and tend to their lives while the lawyers uh, deal with it. If that was ever true, it isn't anymore. The Supreme Court's ruling in Midland Funding v. Johnson means that people in debt trouble now have to be more alert than ever, and bankruptcy just got a lot less safe. Now you have to be prepared to defend yourself pro se, even in bankruptcy. I have always cautioned that bankruptcy isn't necessarily what people think or hope for. See my article, Is Bankruptcy an Option for You, for example, the links in the notes below. My point in that article and elsewhere is that because many of the things that got you in trouble are not helped by bankruptcy, for example, taxes and child support um, and other matrimonial duties, and considering the costs and consequences of bankruptcy, and finally, given that bankruptcy doesn't cure anything but debt, i.e. it doesn't help keep you from getting into debt if you aren't making enough money, bankruptcy is actually only rarely, very rarely appropriate for people being sued for debt. That's all still true. Despite all the ads you see, because bankruptcy is easy and routine for lawyers, it's rarely helpful for the people who attempt it. On the other hand, if what you want to do is deal with a few debts, chances are good that you can get that accomplished by defending yourself from the debt collectors, even without hiring a lawyer. That's why we're here. However, there are some times when even I suggest bankruptcy, as people who followed me know. The Supreme Court, however, just made everything a lot more complicated, though. Or rather, they just made it so that you cannot go into bankruptcy hoping not to have to pay attention to your rights anymore. Now, even if you go into bankruptcy, and perhaps particularly if you do, you still have to stay on your toes and watch your money because the debt collectors can come out of the woodwork and make you pay debts in bankruptcy that they couldn't in other courts. And your lawyer is probably going to be less help than you expect. Sorry, bankruptcy lawyers. Now let's talk a little bit of reality here about bankruptcy. When people find out that you've got money problems, or if they think that you do, a lot of them are going to offer easy solutions. Many of them will be outright scams, as you know. All of them will be by people who want to make a living. If you work, you do it to make money, and you need to make enough money to live, and lawyers are no exception to that rule. What I'm about to say is not bad about lawyers, and I'm not saying that your lawyer will or wants to give you anything but the best. But pay attention to what I am saying, please. In Midland Funding versus Johnson, with the, citation, the citations in the notes, the Supreme Court held that filing obviously outdated claims in someone's bankruptcy does not violate the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the FTCPA. If you are in bankruptcy or considering it, this is huge. You may ask, why? why? What difference does it make? Let's take a step back and look at the bankruptcy process in general. The bankruptcy process is basically a protection, as I said, for debtors. And what happens is when you declare bankruptcy, there's something called an automatic stay, which keeps debt debt collectors from suing you, and they all are supposed to file their claims, which are then going to be looked at by the court, decided on. The court's going to determine the amount of payments you make over what period of time, and then you do your best to do that. If you do succeed, then all of your debts will be discharged, and you'll get out of there with what's called a um, fresh start. That sounds good, right? It isn't an easy path, and in fact, in fact, most bankruptcies are dissolved, uh, that is, ended, without discharge. I believe the appropriate term there is the vast majority are dissolved without discharge. That is, they don't, uh, they end without accomplishing their purpose. 
obviously. The less money you have to pay and the shorter the period you have to make payments, the better your chances are of getting what you wanted in the first place, a fresh start. Does that make sense? The dirty little secret of bankruptcy is that if claims are not disputed, they are generally granted. Maybe they shouldn't be under the law, but they are. So what does that mean? If they're granted in bankruptcy, you may be and probably will be prevented from disputing them if your bankruptcy is dissolved or dismissed without, uh, without discharge. That is, if it doesn't work and you get kicked out, your bankruptcy is dissolved and you're not going to be able to dispute those debts. That's called collateral estoppel. And that in turn means that if the debt collector brings a bad claim and sneaks it through your bankruptcy, and then the bankruptcy is dismissed, you will probably have to pay the debt, even if it would have been illegal for them to sue you for it in the first place. If you're following me, you're probably thinking that can't be right. But it is right, and that isn't all. It won't surprise you to learn, will it, that debt collectors know all of this and have been deluging the bankruptcy courts with ancient debt claims, right? Understand, these claims should never be allowed because an unenforceable claim should always be denied under bankruptcy rules. That means there's never a legitimate reason for bringing an obviously outdated claim. The Johnsons decided to sue Midland under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act for doing that trying to take advantage of court mistakes to sneak in bad claims that should be, never be allowed and which would be illegal to sue for and regulates and um, in regular court violates the FDCPA, said the Johnsons. The Supreme Court ruled that that kind of a ripoff was just fine with them. There is no need to review here the tortured logic involved uh, that allows the intentional doing of something that never under any circumstances should be allowed. After the Supreme Court's ruling, the state of the law simply is this. Debt collectors can file obviously unenforceable claims in bankruptcy without worrying about the FDCPA. And so what they're going to do is file thousands, millions of these claims and hope that a lot of them sneak through and um, that when the, debt when the uh, bankruptcies are dismissed without discharge, they can then go after their money. That's their plan. That's what they're doing. That's what they have been doing. And that's what the Supreme Court said was just fine for them to do. What it means is that you have to worry about these claims now. In bankruptcy cases brought by poor people, the lawyers representing the bankrupts have little incentive to dispute wrongful claims because they're being paid from the scanty resource resources of their clients or they're not being paid at all. Never fear, there's a U.S. trustee who's supposed to oversee the process and protect the bankrupt and legitimate creditors from bad claims, right? But guess what? They often don't. They're too busy and there are too many claims. Hey, that's what they themselves say. Okay, what about the court? It should stop bad claims, right? Well, if it should, it does, given the number of bankruptcies and their complexity, the courts just don't get it done, and no one is disputing this either. That means that the person standing between you and having to pay very wrong claims, either through the bankruptcy itself, or even worse, outside of it, is you. You simply cannot depend on your lawyer or the system to do it for you. You have to look at the claims yourself and you may have to dispute them yourself too, pro se. I know that a lot of lawyers watch these videos. We have quite a few lawyers as members of our site, as a matter of fact. I specifically invite any bankruptcy lawyer to comment on this video and the things I've said here. If, you've got any, if I've got anything wrong here, this would be an excellent time and place for you to correct it. And I'd like to hear it and I'll give you credit for the correction too. Subject to any such correction, I'd say that the decision in Johnson v. Midland funding is a strong reason to think twice and more about filing bankruptcy to get away from debts, especially, especially if you have old debts out there. Maybe you should just defend yourself. That's what we help you do. Protect what's yours and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. Your legal leg up.
www.thinkingdeeply.com.